This is the Porsche Panamera 4 e-hybrid sports turismo. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Basically, in our shortened version, this is a luxury estate car. Yeah, it's a hatchback estate, so it's got a boot on it at the same time. And basically, it's one of those uh, cars that you, I don't know, it's, it's a family car, but at the same time, it's very much a sports car. The Panamera itself was launched back in 2009, so it's been around quite a while. Had a mild makeover in 2013, then in 2016, Porsche brought out Generation 2, is what the car I'm driving today. In 2017, the Sports Turismo was launched, and in 2021, that got a mild makeover as well, and we ended up with the car that I've got today. Now, Panamera gets its name from a very, very famous motor race. Uh, it's called the, Pan, the Carrera Panamericana, and it takes place in Mexico. And it's been around since 1950, they've been racing it, and some of the most famous racing drivers have taken part in that. It's very similar, if you know what the Milli Miglia is, it's very similar to that. So it's like a road rally across Mexico. It's pretty spectacular. 2,138 miles of it. Anyway. Today, we're not going to be doing 2,138 miles. Oh no, unfortunately, we will only be doing 280 miles. I say unfortunately because this is such a lovely car to drive, especially when you're out for a run and you're on some really nice roads as well. So we're going to head down to South Wales to the Dillon Coastal Resort, and I'm going to check it out what that's like, and at the same time, check out what this car's like and give you our opinion on the new Panamera 4 e-hybrid Sports Turismo. This is how a car should sound. Listen to this. <laughs> I didn't really push it either. I was just done with it. So there you have it, guys. The Ferrari Roma. South Wales, just driven down here, four and a half hours in this Panamera 4E hybrid. I've got to say, I got out of this car the way I got in it, as comfortable as. It's one of the best cars I have ever driven on British roads, it really is. So here we are, South Wales, Dillon Coastal Resort. Check it out guys, coming up down there now. When I, when I mean check it out, you've got to have a look at some of these lodges that they've got here. Some of them have even got hot tubs. I, I happen to have a hot tub, of course, because the player always does. Um, this is the, the view and the car just sort of all, it just all works for the weekend. It's so nice. Um, it's called the Dillon Coastal Resort. I said it's coming up there, so it's down there now. You're having a good look at that. Um, it's where Dylan Thomas, uh, Thomas, he was a pretty cool poet guy. I went down to his boathouse yesterday just to have a look around. It was like super cool reading some of his poetry and sort of looking at the words and seeing where he was sat when he was writing that. It really kind of blew me away. Bit much like this car. I mean, 20 inch rims, check out the color, check out the shape. This categorically is the most expensive estate car in the world, but what a car. We need to check it out. We need to get underneath it, get in the back. We need to get under the bonnet, all those bits like we normally do. So let's do it. Enough of my waffle, let's go and have a look. Let's check out under that bonnet. And the bonnet release catch is down here in the driver's footwell. It's a single pull, nice and easy. No fancy catches. Don't forget, if you were buying one of these and it was a left-hand drive one, it's going to be in the same position. So it'd be in the passenger footwell. Think about it. They're not going to spend all that money moving a bonnet catch. It's not worth it. The actual catch for the bonnet is here. You just lift up. It's a little finger lift there, right in the centre underneath that beautiful Porsche crest. And you've got a couple of nice gas struts. 
I'm sorry to disappoint, there's not a lot to see, but I can tell you a lot about it because this car has had a lot of engineering put into it and most of it is sitting here. It's a simply superb engine on this car. It's a 2.9 litre V6 twin turbo petrol engine and it develops around about 330 odd brake horsepower, which is banging. But you think Porsche 330, well, yeah, but then you've got to add in the electric motor and the battery. So we're gonna throw in another 120 brake horsepower. All in, you're looking around about 450 odd brake horsepower. That's a lot, a hell of a lot for this car. Don't forget, it's an estate car at the end of the day. It's a 200 mile an hour estate car. How's that? 0 to 60 time on this, like sub four seconds. It's completely crazy. But you've got the best and the benefit of both worlds because you've got the e-hybrid, which is running in almost total electric mode. And at the same time, you've then got that hybrid to help you and the battery to help you to give you that punch when you go into super sport mode. Now, all of that power is controlled by a Fantan, my favorite gearbox on the market out of every car in the world. And that's that eight speed twin clutch PDK box, that the auto box that comes with this car. You don't get much better gearboxes, in my opinion, on, on any car, whether it's a race car or even on a, on a road car. The car is simply superb. It's been put together beautifully, as you would expect from Porsche. I'm going to tell you all about the modes and, you know, miles to the gallon and how it all works when we get it out on the road. But for the meantime, let's get around the back and see whether it's actually practical. I've got to admit, it's a super looking back to this car, isn't it? And it beautifully designed. You've got LEDs all the way around and the actual... LED light itself runs all the way across there. So at night, it's just one long LED strip that runs across it. Really cool. Uh, you've got your wash wipe on the back here. You've obviously got privacy around here. You've got what I call a floaty screen at the back. So there's no rubbers spoiling that, you know, making any rust get caught in there, God forbid. Um, you've got a spoiler that pops out up the top here at certain speeds, or you can manually put the spoiler up if you really want to show off when you go into, you know, supermarket car park, put your spoiler up. Yeah, it's going to look really cool. Um, but all in all, I mean, beautifully designed as you would expect, as always. Um, twin, massive twin exhaust down here, one, one each side. Just lovely, well put together. Um, let's take a look inside. Uh, the car gets an electrically assisted tail lift, as you can see, it's pretty swift as well. Um, inside here, you've got 515 litres of boot space. Now, unfortunately, with the hybrid, you lose a little bit of boot space because underneath here, I'm gonna pop this up, you can't see much, but that's where all your battery and gubbins are. So it's taking up quite a bit of room. But 515 litres, that's equivalent to about five of those carry-on suitcases. You know, the ones you take on the plane, if they actually let you take them on, you know what I'm saying? Um, but they'll go in there quite easily. Alternatively, you could always get a couple of decent, well, I think you get a greyhound in here quite easily. You know, that dog that runs, chases after, yeah, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Um, you do get some cables with the car. They come in a nice bag like that that you know, weighs quite a lot. But again, inside there, you've got a 13 amp charging cable, which is the one that you can plug in the wall. Now, the good thing about that is if you've got some neighbors and they've given you a key, so when they're away, you look after the house, just pop in there and plug that in because in you know in a couple of hours you can get full charge on this car. Full charge on this car is going to give you around about 30 to 34 miles of range, all electric range. So so handy for popping down the shop, so handy for picking the kids up for school or taking the greyhound for a walk. We'll get back to the greyhound. I don't know why I've got on greyhounds today. Anyway, inside there you've also got another cable that will help you if you're out and you need to plug a cable in when you're plugging it on the fast charger. But most fast chargers nowadays, you just plug them straight in as you pull up on the, well, you know what I'm talking about, guys. Um, this particular car has got the safety pack as well just in case you need to go abroad it's got your triangle in there really nice look it actually says safety kit mm. very easy to make makes my job easy then i know exactly what's in it um you've got a 12 volt adapter over there which is really nice next to it believe it or not there's a little pop-up it's it's one of those european connectors i'm pretty sure if you ask porsche nicely they'll put a 13 amp one there if you're british and you're over here in the uk um, but that one's got the foreign one on, the European twin spoke. Got a little robin running around here. He's, he's having a good old look at what we're doing. It's quite interesting. You know what a robin is? A little tiny bird with a red breast. It's really beautiful. Um, guys, inside here, you do have that inevitable parcel shelf. I know I always go on about these. They're a pain in the backside, but this one is particularly nice. It's the blind type, and it just pops up like that. You have to wiggle it a bit. But when it slides back there, it is so simple to get out. You just lean across there and it's just a little handle that lifts up like that. Look at that, it just pops straight out. That then allows you, you've got a really decent split on there, 40, 40 and 20 in the middle. And you can actually, there's a center section there. So if you've got anything long that you want to slide in there, so if you've been down to the supermarkets, you bought some wood or something, you know, the DIY store, it's going to go through there. 
I think it was designed for when you go skiing. You can put your skis in there. But I think these look super cool when you've got a roof rack on and the skis are on the roof. There you go. That, unfortunately, you can't put anywhere in here. So if you're going to take it out, it's going to have to stay at home. Unfortunately, if you are out and you do find a couple of greyhounds that you want to put in there, you might need to put that on your passenger's lap. But there you go. All in all, though, it's practical as well. It's all about tick my boxes. I love this car. So here we are, up front, in the Panamera, out on the road. And life really doesn't get much better, to be honest with you. You've got so much versatility in this car, so much tech that you can rely on, that's going to work, that's going to get you from A to B without a problem. You're going to have your tunes on. I mean, it's just beautiful, you know, equipment levels in this car. Even on your entry-level car, you're going to get pretty much everything, well, you would think so, for 72,000 UK pounds or more. However, I've got to say, the actual driving position, the comfort of the seat, and you know, just generally the maneuverability of this car, it's a little bit wide. I have noticed that, especially on some of the B roads, you will feel this car is quite a wide car, and it's very long. So when you come to park in this car, you've got to have those, uh, you, you know, got to have the cameras on there and the beepers and everything, but they work very, very well indeed. So you can get in quite tight spots if you have to. Um, it's got a lovely digital cluster on it. It's very typical Porsche setup. Um, all of those uh, gauges, apart from the middle one, um, you can manipulate using, you know, cross left and right and up and down. You've got your telephone on there as well. You've got wireless on here, so everything's wired. You've got wireless charger in here. You just pop this up here. There's a little button here on the side. There's a wireless charger in there. You've got Apple Play. You've got Android mirroring. Um, so you can have all your tunes running in here as well. But at the same time, there are some really good apps that you can get that work in this car as well. So on your main screen, you go into the home screen and all your apps will come up. And from there, you can just literally change. I find it very, very easy to use. It's, it's not complicated at all in this car. Um, five different driving modes. Let me explain a little bit. This is where the hybrid bit, I can explain a bit more how, how it kind of works. By the way, this TFT touchscreen is beautiful. Apart from, again, a little niggle with all the manufacturers is come up with a glass that doesn't show all your you know, sticky finger marks because as soon as you pull up and the, the light goes off, all you can see is your finger marks and it's pretty unhygienic as well in a way if you think about it. Anyway, manufacturers work on that one because I'm sure there's a glass out there that won't pick up on all those you know, sticky fingers. Five different modes, as I said, hybrid, full hybrid mode. You can change the drive mode on this car, go into the hybrid and then you will see you've got the different modes. So you've got e-power, where you're actually just running on pure electric power. Now, your electric meter is down here. We've established how long it takes to charge. Two and a half, three hours, you get full charge out of it. The car will give you on electric power between 25 and 30 miles maximum. To be honest, I prefer it in the hybrid mode, which is what I'm in at the moment. Um, the hybrid mode will give you a mix of the engine and also for the battery as well. So you get sort of like a nice balance and you'll find that it draws on that battery when only when it really needs it. And even at 80 miles an hour, you can still run in battery power, believe it or not. So that's the, the technology that's built into this car. You then got sport mode. So now you're gonna get that extra kick from the battery, from the motor, the electric motor, to the petrol engine, combining those brake horsepowers to give you the maximum output that you're gonna get. Obviously not as good when it comes to the fuel consumption. Now, quick bit about the fuel consumption. Um, on the run down here, as an average, we were getting around 38 miles to the gallon. Um, we were getting at 1.53. It's not bad. I mean, you've just got to remember it's a 2.9 litre V6 twin turbo engine. It's going gonna, it's gonna to suck that juice when it wants to. Um, and I've got to say, we weren't exactly frugal when we were driving it. We were giving it some beans at some points because the roads around here are absolutely phenomenal. Um, then you've got Sport Plus. Pretty much says, does what it says on the tin. So you get that full bang for your buck when it comes to brake horsepower. And finally, you've got an individual mode down there that you can set up in and actually, you know, choose the bits and pieces that you'd like. So you can change the chassis control, chassis level. This car's got air suspension, so you get this lovely ride. But at the same time, if you want to lower it down for a little bit more speed, a bit more sort of, you know, hugging the road as you're going around all the corners and stuff, then you can do that as well. Um, and also, you've got that lovely, uh, that spoiler on the back. You can extend that out when you're going in the car park, just to show everybody you've got a spoiler on the back. 
back of your Porsche. Yeah, I, I do like that actually, I think it's quite cool. Um, steering wheel, another thing which I really love. Three spoke steering wheel, beautiful leather, lovely position, driving position as well, I've got to say that. Left hand side here, you've got your volume control for your tunes. Don't forget you've got Android mirroring, you've got the Apple Play in here, you've got the Apple charger in there, the phone charger. Um, you know, the car is not lacking in anything. To the right here is your telephone control and then you've got your menu adjustment inside the actual, you know, the, the dials themselves. Got the, the dials either side, they're the ones that you can manipulate between using that little menu scroll button there. Got a drive mode button down here as well, which is perfect. You don't need to necessarily get over there and start fiddling around while you're driving along, which could be dangerous. Um, but all in all, well set up, well bolstered seat, really comfortable. Um, you know, having driven down, it, it was around about four and a half hours, had one stop on the way down, um, just to grab a quick coffee and a, and a snack. Um, apart from that, what a lovely car to drive. Double cup holder here, places to put your coffee. Um, not much inside here, I've got to say, um, yeah, you wouldn't really get, you know, it's more of a little mouse's pocket than anything else. But all in all, lovely car, love all this centre dash as well, um, and they're very haptic-y. So you can just touch things, you get a little reverb back on it, you can feel that, feel the haptic working so you know you've actually pushed that button and, and got it going. Porsche, I think you've done an excellent job on this car. Great all-round peripheral vision, brilliant brakes, blind spot mirrors, you've nailed it with all the safety aids. What more could you want out of the car? This could be the ultimate perfect family car. So there you have it, the Panamera 4 from Porsche. What a car and what a place. Look, the sun's started to come out and it's absolutely beautiful down here. I'm gonna give them one more plug. Don't forget the Dillon Resort down here in South Wales. I can't wait to get this beautiful Porsche back out on the road because the B roads around here in South Wales are absolutely superb to drive something like this. Get yourself down here, get yourself a test drive in one of these cars because you're gonna be so impressed. It is life-changing driving one of these cars. It is the super estate of the century in my opinion. And personally, if I had the money, I think I'd definitely be going down to put some deposit money on down on one of these cars. Um, guys, you've been watching me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. I hope you've enjoyed this little review we've done on the Panamera itself. Um, I know I've certainly enjoyed myself coming down here to South Wales and spending a weekend with the car. Don't forget like, subscribe and comment. There's a comment box down below. Just leave any questions you've got down there or any comments you've got. Keep them nice and clean, please. Um, you know, don't go rude on me. Well, you can do, but make nice comments. I like nice comments. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to, because we don't just do car reviews, as you saw in the video at the beginning. Um, we do all sorts of stuff. So you might not be interested in buying a new car at the moment, or just not interested in cars. There's loads of other stuff. We do all sorts of bits and pieces, as you saw in the video. So leave the bell sign unchecked, and that will give you a notification whenever we upload a video. And then you can have a look and go, oh, I fancy watching AJ. He's on a boat this week, or he's out in a hotel, he's on a wherever. You know what I'm talking about. Um, don't forget because we are part of a much bigger organization we're not just a player youtube channel don't be silly we are part of the player player is a men's bookazine a bookazine is a hardback magazine and we come out on a frequency like a magazine so that's why it's called a bookazine hope i explained that all right so we come out twice a year it's 200 odd pages of everything us guys absolutely love there's cars there's boats it's called the player yes well what else would it be called ultimately so you've got 220 pages you've got cars boats jet skis motorbikes interviews food golf guys there's everything as i say that we love if you want a free copy of that i can't give you the actual book because that's like 100 uk pounds each so I'd love to give you one, but they cost too much money and I'd probably lose my job because my boss would go, you can't go giving those away, I'm gonna take it out of your salary. So you get the online version, which is exactly the same. It's no difference. You can flick through it with your mouse, your finger or whatever, or you can zoom in and zoom out. It's no different. They're both identical. It's just the online one means you can download it or watch it online. You don't have to carry a big book around with you. So it's more practical at the end of the day. All you've got to do is head over there and to subscribe. You know, just got to know your name and your email. That's all I need. No big data capture. Get over there. Enjoy it, guys. Um, and like I said, we're hopefully back here next week. We're not one of those buggies, that's for sure. We're back here next week with something different. I look forward to catching you then.